Human beings are members of a whole, in creation of one essence and soul. If one member is afflicted with pain, the other members uneasy will remain. If you've no sympathy for human pain, the name of human you cannot retain. This poem, written eight centuries ago by Iranian poet Saadi, decorates the gate of the United Nations building entrance. His poem, Bani Adam, which means the children of humanity in English, calls for the breaking of all barriers in humanity. Never again is a phrase that's been constantly repeated since the end of the Holocaust. However, on October 7, the world looked on in shock and horror as never again unfolded right before their eyes. Over 1,400 and counting innocent Israelis, including men, women, and children, as well as numerous foreign nationals, were brutally raped, executed, burned alive, beheaded, and taken hostage by Hamas terrorists. Six Canadians have lost their lives so far. Two are still missing. These terrorists shot dogs. They executed Holocaust survivors. They laughed. They tied up adults and children and burned them alive. As more footage comes out and more stories are shared, our collective horror as humanity rises. There's one story, Madam Speaker, one story in particular, one picture I see every time I close my eyes and I can't get it out of my head. It's a picture of a young girl in a wheelchair, wearing a purple shirt, her smiling father standing beside her at the Nova Music Festival. Ruth Peretz is a 16-year-old Israeli girl with, with cerebral palsy who loves music. She and her father were last seen at the Desert Music Festival that was attacked by the vile terrorists. In released footage, Eric, her father, was seen carrying Ruth with Hamas terrorists chasing them down. Both are now being held hostage in Gaza. <coughs> Ruth has cerebral palsy. She has urgent medical needs. <coughs> what Hamas did is absolutely an act of monstrous barbarity. It was the single largest targeted massacre of Jews in one single day since the Holocaust. And Madam Speaker, now is the time for moral clarity, not moral relativism. Madam Speaker, Hamas is an evil, genocidal terrorist organization. Hamas is a listed terror group in Canada and has one main goal, the eradication of Jews and the annihilation of the state of Israel. In other words, genocide. That vile goal is enshrined in its charter of terrorism. Madam Speaker, Hamas builds military bases and hospitals, schools, and apartments. Hamas digs up water pipes and uses it to make missiles. Hamas holds innocent Gazans hostage, using them as human shields. They spread misinformation. They kill Palestinians for their own political gain and share it through their terrorist news networks. Thousands of innocent lives have been lost since Hamas's brutal and monstrous attack, both in Gaza and Israel. My heart breaks for every single innocent life lost, Palestinian, Israeli, Canadian, and all others. But let me be very clear. Be they Palestinian, Israeli, Canadian, or foreign nationals, Hamas is responsible absolutely responsible for every single innocent life lost in this war. Full stop. <laughs> Hamas terrorists must release and return all hostages and lay down their arms. I support Israel's inal inalienable right to defend itself. It's an uh, uh, my apologies, I can't even speak right now. I support Israel's right to exist, and I support Israel. As reports of the gruesome and horrific massacre came out, the response here in Canada was just as vile. Canadians looked on in shock and disgust as people took to the streets, 
dancing, celebrating, and passing out sweets in response to Hamas's terrorist attack. On Monday, hundreds attended pro-Hamas rallies in Canada, including Toronto, calling for the eradication of Israel and celebrating Hamas's terrorist massacre of civilians as an act of resistance. When a Toronto news reporter questioned attendees, they were unable to explain why the rally was not in response to Hamas's terrorist attack or deflected with whataboutism. Since then, one of the organizers posted a picture praising a Hamas terrorist on his Instagram, and the main organizer of the account made a post questioning the Holocaust itself. Footage from hate rallies in Canada and around the world show people chanting, gas the Jews, tense moments with police, and saying Khaybar to pro-Israel supporters, which is a reference to the 7th century slaughter of 100 Jews by Muslims. Terrorist flags of ISIS, Hamas, Taliban, and more have been seen in rallies right here in Ontario. This is not something I ever thought that I would see in 2023 here in Canada, and it is horrifying. This anti-Semitic anti behavior glorifying Hamas's terrorist massacre is nothing short of radical extremism propagated by the largest state sponsor of terrorism in the world, the Islamic regime in Iran. For those who are unaware, Hamas is trained, funded, and armed by the terrorist Islamic regime in Iran. This is the same radical extremism that Iranian Canadians have been sounding the alarm on at demonstrations calling for the end of the terrorist Islamic regime in Iran. The same demonstrations that made woman life freedom a rallying cry for peace and democracy around the world. The same demonstrations that helped the world finally understand that the Islamic regime in Iran does not represent Iranians, and Iranians have been fighting against the Islamic regime for decades. Friday, October 13th, was declared by an ex-Hamas leader as a global day of jihad, a call to Muslims around the world to rise up and exterminate Jews around the world. Canadians took it seriously. Police forces across the country increased security in Jewish community centers, schools, synagogues, and more. Those who attended the pro-Hamas rallies this week claim it was about freedom and human rights. But where were they? when Iranians were calling for the end of the Islamic regime and calling for freedom and human rights in Iran. They were nowhere to be seen. While Canadian politicians of all stripes were quick to condemn these pro-Hamas hate rallies, some did not. And that silence is deafening. One horrifying and spine-tingling sentiment that I've seen on social media time and time again from people in the Jewish community is the following. And I quote, this week, I've learned which friends would hide me during the next Holocaust, which friends would not, and which friends would hand me over. I've got friends in all three categories. I see you. Chilling. The Jewish people are living their darkest days right now, living their worst nightmare since the Holocaust. I cannot even fathom what it must feel like to live in fear, to walk down the street and look at someone and think, will this person hate me just because I exist, just because I'm Jewish? But Madam Speaker, even in these darkest days of loneliness, fear, and isolation, in the face of the worst anti-Semitism seen since the Holocaust, there is a beacon of hope. The sun is slowly rising, and I'm referring to the lion and sun flag. Since the horrific at terrorist attack by Hamas, Iranians in Iran and around the world have been standing in solidarity with the people of Israel. Iranians stand with Israel was a hashtag that was trending on X for days. Every single peace rally organized by Israel and the Jewish community has been flooded with Iran's lion and sun flag and attended by hundreds of Iranians in a show of solidarity. Iranians inside Iran have been chanting slogans and secretly raising the flag of Israel in defiance of the terrorist Islamic regime's anti-Semitic, Holocaust-denying, and pro-Hamas policies. Jewish Iranian soldiers have been sending messages of support to Iranians through the Israel Defense Forces Farsi channel on X, saying that they are in this together against the terrorist Islamic regime. 
Madam Speaker, one of my fondest memories of this past week, and it's been a very, very dark week, so I don't say this lightly, is when I was attending the rally supporting peace for Israel on Monday night in Toronto. And after the rally, I noticed the standoff. On one side, there were a lot of Israeli flags, and on the other side, pro-Hamas counter-protesters had shown up. It was very tense. I walked to the front of the lines to get a better look, and as soon as I got there, amidst the sea of blue and white, I saw two Iranian lion and sun flags standing right in front of everyone else, raising them high and waving them. I've never been more proud to be Iranian-Canadian. And the reason that Iranians are speaking out on behalf of Jews in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and around the world, it's because of our shared history and friendship between Iranians and Jews. The history of Jews in Iran dates back to late biblical times. After establishing the Persian Empire, King Cyrus the Great allowed all subjects to participate in governance. He borrowed the good deeds of other cultures in the first sign of his commitment to diversity through culture. He set the Jews free from their Babylonian captivity that had taken place decades before. Cyrus the Great facilitated their return to the Promised Land, Israel, and he became a notable figure in the Jewish scripture as a savior who helped them build the Second Temple in Jerusalem. This great event in Jewish and Persian history took place in the late 6th century BC, by which time there was a well-established and influential Jewish community in Persia. For 44 years, the terrorist and illegitimate Islamic regime in Iran has tried to erase our shared history, has tried to say that Jews and Iranians are enemies, but they cannot erase our history. These radical extremists who have been funding terrorism in the Middle East these radical extremists who have helped Hamas attack Israel, who support this cause, who, who call for the eradication of Jews in Israel, they cannot erase our shared history spanning almost 3,000 years. And again, Madam Speaker, in these darkest times, I've never been more proud of the brave Iranian people who have been spearheading the fight to call out pure evil. The Lion and Son of the Iranian people will always stand, not behind, but beside the Blue Star of Israel, because that is what friends do. That is what humanity does. That is what it means to stand up and speak out in the face of pure, unmitigated evil. Madam Speaker, I am so proud to be part of a government that has unequivocally spoken out against the heinous terrorist attack by Hamas. There is no other way to describe what happened. It is the darkest form of terrorism we have ever seen. It is pure evil. There is no yes but. There is no moral equivalency when you are burning babies, when you are killing people and then raping their friends next to them and then executing them. There is no justification whatsoever. Anyone who thinks so, anyone who thinks so needs to take a good, hard look at themselves in the mirror and question whether or not they are human. Madam Speaker, I'm going to end with what I said at the beginning. Human beings are members of a whole, in creation of one essence and soul. If one member is afflicted with pain, the other members uneasy will remain. If you've no sympathy for human pain, the name of human you cannot retain. I stand with Israel. Thank you.